Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today I wanna to share with you a little project I'm working on. I'm trying to assemble a digital data mode platform for VHF and UHF. And unlike my man packs, we're gonna be using NHT. We'll get into why I want to do that, how I plan to use it, the gear breakdown. But before we do that, I wanna share with you the first kind of maiden voyage of the kit that will break down. And it was full of failures. Uh, so we're also gonna do a light after action report because I love to learn from my experiences and those failures. Let's check it out. Good. Field operating guys, real sweat. This is not fun, it looks cool. Connect. AX25, let's do it. So this antenna is not gonna work. I think either my body's attenuating the, uh, the signal, but uh, yeah, we're not getting in. We're gonna have to toss up a uh, higher gain antenna. This is what I get for being a hobbit. Oh. All right, let's see if this works better. Take off the uh, B and C. All right, let's do it again. This might be a bus, guys. It's transmitting. There's some things I like about this setup, but uh, being able to have an extra set of hands, but in general, this is a bust. Let's try one more time. Let's do whiskey 7MOT-6. Oh, we're connected, finally. So I'm relaying through a station that is, oh, I don't know, about 40 miles, 45 miles uh, west of me. And uh, then we're connecting to a station that is, screw that up, in Phoenix. All right, so it looks like my password failed for some reason. I'm uh, not exactly sure what's going on here. We're gonna try to connect one more time. Yep, we're connected again. Password does not match. I'm gonna try one more station. I'm sweating all over this keyboard. Good thing it's waterproof or water resistant. Okay, so I'm connected to another station here. Uh, it may be that I forgot to set the password correctly on this guy here. Oh, nothing but errors. The uh, little red light now is blinking. The uh, keyboard got disconnected. So guys, I know this stuff looks sexy on Instagram, but uh, there's just a ton of issues. This has been a shit show. This is not field expedient. The um, retention mechanism here actually cracked off and uh, I'm unable to use the keyboard. Uh, I had an issue with this earlier. Uh, it had some damage to it, but I thought it'd be fine. I'm gonna buy another one because there's a lot of value to this. I've heard that the second or later generations of the iKey keyboard work a lot better. So this video is gonna be all over the place, but uh, we're gonna share why this high speed stuff, while it looks cool on Instagram, probably is gonna fail for you in the field. So I had a few objectives for that exercise. So number one, I was trying to carry out some digital data mode communication. In this case, it was packet over Winlink to be able to check my email. But I wanted to have the ability to pretty much do every type of digital data mode that's available to us on FM, on VHF and UHF. So it's beyond packet. So we'll get into why that's important in a second. Number two, I like to operate in a harsher environment than most operators. So there is an element of me being able to ruggedize my gear. And then number three, field expedient. I didn't want to have to mess around with my cable management system. I wanted to have some ability to have my hands free. So let's go ahead and walk through all of the components. As someone who is an active operator who likes to trail run, hike, backpack, and as you saw in the beginning of the video, uh, start to experiment with the e-bike, I'm usually moving at speeds anywhere from three miles an hour, in this case, up to 30 miles per hour. So I needed a system to keep all the gear together. I've been running the Haley Strategic D3 CRM for at least six years now. It's been my primary way for me to load out uh, the essentials for me. 
So in the actual main compartment of the chest rig, I have removed everything and I have the computer that I'm using for digital data mode communication. And this is the Panasonic FCM1 tough pad with the iKey keyboard. And then I have included some Velcro straps to secure the system. And what's great about this is that there was absolutely no movement. So from a security perspective, while on the bike, while being dismounted, while doing that light jog up the hill, this all stayed in one place and was fairly compact. Now this chest rig actually has a harness. I have removed it for right now, but in here I have two components. We've got our radio, this is the Yaesu VX6R. And then in the front magazine pouch here, I have opted to include the DigiRig Mobile. This is the device that's gonna allow us to have uh, audio in and out. Uh, we can't use the cat control, so we can't control the radio uh, remotely. But again, the goal here was to keep everything secured and it was mounted on my shoulder. Now, the only thing I did not like is that in terms of where uh, the USB cables attached from the radio to the computer, uh, I had to mount this on my right side and I don't like having the antenna so close, but it did not really whip me whatsoever, so not really a problem. So the per first issue that I tried to solve was the ability to have everything secured into my person and I think we have succeeded. One of the big issues with amateur radio is that the gear is not terribly robust and rugged for my needs. Everybody's needs are different. So uh, first of all, I used a little bit of Velcro here to have a little bit of cable management for the USB-C cable that comes uh, out of the DG rig. Now, I wanted to make sure that I was able to have some level of weatherproofing. So on Amazon, I went ahead and I actually found these silicone captive caps. So there's a little ring here, and this is just something I wanted. So when the uh, device is not connected to the computer, we have the ability to protect the cable. So I'll put links down below for, for all of this stuff. There isn't gear on the market that's uh, tailored for this type of application of keeping the digital mode interface securely connected to uh, the radio, I have tried rubber bands in the past and the problem is that things get disconnected. So for this case, I decided to opt for the um, a double-decker taco. It's by High Speed Gear International, I think. And I modified it. It typically has these little plastic uh, retention mechanisms on both sides here in addition to the bungee cord. I cut them off on this side of the radio, on the M4 side of the magazine pouch, as well as on the digi rig side and what i found is it keeps it very well secured so the goal was not to have any type of movement the interface from the yesu vx6 to the digi rig is using the threaded connector and the nice thing about this cable from digi rig is that it's fairly short the baofeng model is very long so you're going to have more of a cable uh, management mess so i'm going to pull this out so to disconnect i just remove this guy right here and we're gonna go ahead and take out the digi rig first. And it's fairly well seated in there, which is the plan. So the digi rig is actually designed to take your dumb radio and give it some digital data mode capabilities because it will present a full sound card to your computer or your phone, allowing you to get audio in and out. And also for certain radios, there's another port here that allows you to control the radio via cat control. We do this on the man packs. And the reason why I opted for this over something like the MobiLink TNC4, which I have, I have the three and the two, is that those devices are packet only. And while I did packet for this exercise packet radio, I wanted the ability to do other digital data modes. I wanted this to be a true platform. So I'm having success using JSA call for messaging and relays on FM on two meters. There may be a future video on that. And then there's another software platform that I've done many videos on, and it's on the FL Digi suite. So FL Digi, FL Message, and our emergency communications team has used that successfully in the field to pass more structured data in terms of like forms, like incident command forms. So that is the reason why I'm not using the MobiLink TNC. I wanted something that was beyond packet that took us to that next level. So one last thing on the DigiRig, I'm a big fan of silicone caps. When I was experimenting and trying to ruggedize the Raspberry uh, Pi, uh, I went and invested in a bunch of these little guys. So since I'm not using the uh, serial port here for cat control, since it's not available, I've got this little cap here and it just allows me to uh, make sure that there's minimal moisture or particles getting into it. So back to the ruggedized component. The cable that I'm using is a USB cable I picked up on Amazon, 
and I opted uh, for a 90 degree elbow mostly because it allows it to stay on the bottom here and then there's pressure that comes down and it's just another layer to allow things to really be secured and not really have movement where the cable would otherwise probably back out. Another handy feature of the Taco is that we have these retention mechanisms in the form of the bungee and it allows us to secure the cabling in such a way where there's very little movement. So uh, I just found it as a nice uh, bonus to be able to uh, one, dress the cables so that they did not get in the way but also so that they remained secure. So this is what the USB cable looks like going into uh, the digi rig and I'll put the link down below for this one. Uh, the only other change that I made is I did put a couple of ferrite beads to uh, mitigate any RFI that might be or any kind of interference that might be getting into the computer causing problems. So let's talk about the radio. Uh, the reason why we're doing all of this is because there's no all-in-one digital data mode radio that can do this and I know people are going to say well the Kenwood D74A which is discontinued and the new D75A does support digital data mode but it's packet only. It would be amazing if a manufacturer would have a wireless sound card and maybe cat control built in so we wouldn't have to do this. Again, I'm improvising based on the gear that's available. Now, when I wear this um, over one of my shoulders, I want to have the ability to frequency lock the radio so that it does not move around. So the first thing I actually do is I have this facing towards me. So if you're wearing this on your person, I can pull this out just a little bit and actually still have access to seeing the screen and then be able to change the frequency. The way that I program these is I put, uh, for example, the Winlink packet frequency, APRS, all of those modes in memory. So all I have to do is select that memory and then for that period of operation, I don't have to mess with it. And then I'll also lock the front panel display so that if there's any accidental key presses, they don't result in any issues. Um, the threaded cable here is nice on the VX6. I previously was running the FT60 and my issue with that was that the 3.5 millimeter jack would back out and when it did that it would key the radio and we would have a dead carrier causing interference and running down the battery. So it's really nice to have the threaded connectors on the VX6. The other change I made with this radio is that I'm a big fan of going from SMA, which is the standard connector, to BNC and it allows me the ability to quickly connect different antennas. Uh, in this case, I'm experimenting with the Slim Duck by Smiley antenna. I did pay for this and it is a two meter only. So I wanted an antenna purpose built for uh, the packet work I was doing. And then you saw on that video that I was unable to make my connection into that remote station. Either my body was attenuating the signal, this did not have enough gain, could be a variety of reasons. And then I tossed up the Edfong roll-up J-pole. And again, uh, I have B and C here by default. So as you saw in the video, this was chest mounted and all I had to do was go ahead and change it out. And I could do this with my Yagi antenna and a few other things. So that's it for the radio guys. Okay, so the chest rig for me from Haley Strategic is my go-to. I've been using this for trail running, hiking, backpacking. Front compartment mostly has support gear. Uh, out here in the Sonoran Desert, I find myself using the multi-tool a lot. And for those of you guys who are 2A fans, I always run a second magazine for the pistol that I carry on my trail runs. Uh, the inner lining of the Haley Strategic D3 CRM has some hook and loop in here. So it's very easy just to get some aftermarket Velcro and be able to add your own straps. Uh, these are not sewn, but uh, I found that it did not move just by strapping uh, pretty nicely. And then I can pull out the uh, iKey keyboard along with the uh, Panasonic FZM1. Now my goal was also to be hands-free, so I don't know if you saw that in the video. Uh, we're gonna put this in your perspective. Let's say that uh, you're wearing the chest rig. Uh, you can do a couple things. You could take the iKey keyboard since it's fairly rigid, and you can actually just drop it in there and then operate hands-free. You also have the radio mounted. So I found this really nice uh, while it was making its longer connections. So very successful in terms of the configuration and the security. All the fails that you saw in the video uh, were really related to software misconfiguration on my part. Uh, the issue that I'm running into is that I'm doing active development for a field expedient digital platform that's primarily gonna be touch only. And I've got about 10 of these and I just picked an older one and didn't check it before I left. So that's on me for not checking my gear. And that's why I had my old call sign and an incorrect password. 
Uh, but radio to radio, we were getting into the remote station once we found one that worked with a higher gain antenna. Um, so yeah, the other thing I'll mention, we did have a fail with the iKey keyboard. I need to contact iKey and see if there's any way for them to tell me if I can replace that little latching mechanism. Uh, as I mentioned before, it was uh, damaged and I thought it might be okay. And just the amount of uh, usage out there in the field, manipulating it, uh, it actually snapped off, got disconnected. We saw those two blinking lights and basically the keyboard was disconnected. Uh, at the end, I was able to seat it back in. It's still broken, uh, still seems to be seated, but I don't feel comfortable with it in this configuration. So I am going to rectify it. Now this was used to me. I have no idea what prior condition it was in. So maybe purchasing a new one might be better. And I believe that uh, the summer, some of the later generations may have uh, better retention mechanisms. At least that's the case for the Panasonic uh, FZ G1. So guys, I just want to share with you how I think through my communication goals. I'm not doing this to solve an arbitrary problem. Uh, I really wanted something that was lightweight, could work in my environment, gave me the ability to be hands-free and gave me uh, digital data mode agility to work multiple different modes of operation. So I think I was successful. Uh, we're probably gonna get into the digital software later on. Uh, you could interface this with a phone and not run it with uh, the full computer. Uh, the reason why I'm running a full computer is that I have a lot more capabilities at my disposal, especially since I'm a software engineer. I'm running some specialized amateur radio software that is not publicly available yet. And unfortunately, well, uh, there are more and more applications coming on the, uh, the phone market from Android and iOS. It's not complete. You're not gonna get the same level of um, robustness from using something that has a richer ecosystem. And you can only find that on some of the laptops and computers. Um, one thing I'm probably gonna change in the future is once I'm able to write all my software and make everything touch, I may be abandoning the keyboard altogether. Uh, it's really quite nice. And that'll also cut the weight and also give me room for, for more gear. So guys, this is my first attempt at ruggedizing some of my amateur radio equipment based on my application. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, where's my coffee? I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Oh, and thanks to everybody who supported me on Buy Me A Coffee. I owe you guys a lot more material. Uh, that's coming. Cheers, all. Well, this is what it's like when you film solo.